Hi, once again. Uh, yeah, as, as was mentioned, my name is Stefan. I'm like doing some Python stuff. <laughs> yeah, and today we'll go to talk about uh, profiling and like mostly about profiling, but the bottlenecks itself. Uh, so yeah, I will I will take a step back and take the background. So why 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 it is a topic uh, which I choose to to discuss about? Uh, yeah, so the thing is that uh, in most of the projects, uh, like it's early or later, it becomes a situation when you have to optimize something, and like when you are building, you are not you don't care much about it. So yeah, exactly, you are you are measuring something, but like when the speed of the project is coming high. Like you can deliver faster than, than like measuring things and like uh, imagine it. And th this is the first point. And the second point is that like you can like get in the uh, project which contains a lot of legacy stuff, which like like historically such thing happens. And you need to optimize and find the ways how you can do it. Um, yeah. Um, what I can say like. Uh, I'm not like that. It is not the thing that uh, I'm professional in, and like this is like the main goal of the presentation is just like um, probably give you advice uh, how you can do such things, and like when when you get such task or like when your client is coming and taking that uh, like we need to do something, just like to give you idea which which ways do you have, and like at least. For some of you, it could be helpful, and you you will know from where to start. Okay, uh, yeah. So, like, probably I will start from. Have you have some of you uh, prefer try it to profile in the applications? Like, you can like do it in in chat or like raise your hands as whatever you want. I will give a few hints. No one. Okay, <laughs> that's interesting. Okay, so probably it would be like be helpful for at least some of you. Um, yeah. Okay. So let's let's talk. What what is the profiling? Um, the profiling is the thing that when you you want to measure the performance of your code. So like, let's simplify simplify. Like say it in simple words. Like. Let's just imagine that uh, after, like, you know, that uh, Python is a terrible, uh, like, programming language, and it's just like uh, executing line by line. So, and imagine that profiling is just doing things that it's placing, like, time start, time end, after, b before and after each line. Each line, it's so super simplified, but like, you can, in your imagination, could be in this way. Um, yeah, this, uh, this is if we are talking about, Time profiling. It's like there is different kind of profiling which you can like dig in into in. Um, yeah, you can you can find the things that you need to measure your memory management, like how your memory is used and like your CPU usage. Uh, it's it's a different thing. Like you, there is a lot of approaches how you can measure your performance and how you can profile the applications. Um, but yeah, everything is related to profiling. Is related that. You are somehow trying to um, find the the slowest ways, and you want to your code somehow give you some numbers which you can measure and see uh, which places could be could be optimized and what what the the weakest way uh, the weakest place of your code. Um, yeah, but but the the thing is that like you you know you have to know the places where to measure. You can like if you have the large application which is contains like thousands or and hundreds and points, uh, you can just like measure all the application. And so you you have to narrow somehow, and you have to narrow the scope which you will be measuring. Uh, yeah, and let's go go further. I will tell you like in which in which situations it would be helpful for you and which not. Um, yeah, by the way, can you see can you see the like your own faces here or it's only for me for zoom <laughs> i'm not really familiar with it can you see this uh, presentation fine yes yeah sure thanks okay so um when can it be helpful like uh there is a lot of ways when your application is is too large and 
like it is decomposed well so it could be from the one thing it's like good for your readability of the project you can un understand and find the places where works fine and where it's not and like the old part um is like responsible for its own business logic but the thing is that uh, it could be too wide to understand where the problem is so like you are digging you have one endpoint for instance which like front end or other services if it's microservices like coming to you and then it just like completely mess what's going on further and you you have no idea like what takes much time and what what place have you optimized to yeah and profiling could be helpful here so you can um step by step understand which which places and where which functions for instance like used the most uh that's the case uh yeah as as i told previously it's about memory uh, memory issues leaks and just optimization as well uh it's not the topic for for this presentation i will just give you an idea that such such, such things also could be profiled so for instance like you are working with uh large data sets or like you are processing big files um profiling could be helpful for you you just need to need to think in this way so you can profile it somehow and profile could be helpful for you um okay <clears throat> do you have any any questions on on this step and i probably like some of you already have questions <laughs> okay that's all um yeah so the decomposition is is the one thing and the another that you might like have some some ideas that you have the weak places and you have to optimize it but you don't know which exact place so you like if you are good enough <laughs> like it's it's a good skill to understand and prevent the and find it, like by looking on it uh, that, uh, that some places could be slow but it's not enough like you have to give some numbers so uh, like numbers in your head it's just like your imagination and you need to somehow measure it yeah and performance and profile also could be like the key for you here like you can you can measure and you can present it for stakeholders for instance like uh, come to come to the client and say like hi i, I did some investigations and i found that uh, we have some performance issue which can like produce some um, lot if we get if we have more clients or like on new year eve or like christmas eve <laughs> like when we have a huge amount of of uh, users we'll just get out of resources for instance and like to give an idea where you have to optimize and like propose some ideas uh yeah and uh, like it's actually not the last thing but uh it's it's also important one so we can have an idea of how your project itself used and um, what is the most used functions uh, functions so you can like receive to probably they are not they can be not slow like that uh, but you you have you can have an idea that they are used the most and you can optimize for instance like uh, if it's like the the key option of of your project you can write on a different language or you can think in uh, like whatever you want but but you have you will have at least idea uh which parts of code is the most used yeah that's it um and when not when not to use, use profiling when it when it won't help you uh, well so if you want to measure itself how your production works um uh, it could be the better idea because profiling anyway like it injects some the pieces of code into into your code uh yeah it's like in a low level but even though it's like slow down your productivity um yeah and, and like you can you can imagine that um if you will do it overall the project your overall, overall performance even if it's not not much but it will it will slow down and i i highly not recommend you to do so <laughs> yeah so probably to better to set up the staging environment or like pro closely closely to it or even if you can do it uh local it depends like you can you can think about a lot of tests and emulate the production activity um yeah but it's not not supposed to 
to measure production things. Um, yeah, apart from that, if you want to get uh, like detailed, detailed response, uh, detailed like uh, analytics, what by endpoints, what how what this thing is going on and how it works, uh, there is a lot of stuff which works better. Um, like for instance, Prometheus is like awesome thing that you can place the metrics before and uh, after the endpoint just to have an idea how much time it takes. It's, it will take you approximate meaning and like it takes proceeds, proceeds faster if you if you need general information. So um, if you if you have if you don't have an idea like which endpoints takes like if is it uh, 200 milliseconds or it like 20 seconds, like Prometheus could be better for you because like when profiling it's like more targeted thing. So you you have to narrow somehow the the, the thing. Uh, open tracing also could be could be the way for you. Okay. Um, next thing um, regarding regarding the project we are working on. If it's like if you, you if you don't want to want to spend the time on it and like uh, your your clients is certified and everything's work fine, so just profiling like all around could be just a waste of time. Um, it's not the the thing that go easier, easy and fast. So you can you can sit here and find nothing. Um, yeah, you need to understand why you are doing it for. Um, yeah, just like probably you need to set up some some measurements. When like if we are laying under our SLOs, like for instance our endpoint starting to respond more than two seconds. Okay, so we need to to dig into what's going on and what we can do. Um, but like, if you're just trying to optimize whatever you see, it could be like bad idea. Okay. Um, yeah. And the last thing is, uh, investigating tracebacks. Um, well, profiling could be not the, the best option here. So you can see overall calls, which is going on, but as, as you know, like, uh, Python is more straightforward. And it's better probably to use some use some other tools, for instance, like Raygun or the thing which is like making snapshots before the traceback happens. Uh, profiling doesn't do it, and it's just like collecting metrics. And well, it it could be not efficient here. So that's the idea which I want to like to you know before you start looking at it and how it works and just like. Don't do wrong things before, before start. Okay. So going closely to the profiling itself, let's look closely uh, which which strategies it have. Um, yeah, here I listed three of them. It just I used it before uh, before I I faced with them. I listed uh, like here, but there are also some memory profiling as I mentioned about I mentioned before and some other strategies you can look through. Uh, but on my opinion, it's like here is the most easy to implement, easy to try at least. And if you have to give a shot and understand, at least trying that to understand what is going on, like it could be helpful for you. So let's try it. Line profiling. Uh, basically, yeah, that's that's what I talked previously. Uh, the idea of line profiling, just like giving you line by line uh, iteration, like which is basically setting the timeouts and uh, give you an idea which each line takes takes the time. Um, yeah, it's it has some advantages and pros and cons on the opposite sides. So yeah, the, the first thing is that it's really straightforward. So you don't need to think about like uh, complicated structures and how to manage it, how to read it. It just like will take your code and just like map it with, with time. That's it. Yeah, sorry. <clears throat> uh, because of it, uh, like it presents you some statistics with timing and Percentage at least, like a percentage of time which took your function, your endpoint, whatever it is. Uh, yeah, and just it, it visually could be easy identified uh, which 
which place is the weakest one in, in the measurement one. Um, yeah, so, and here, like you can get, uh, without digging into too deep, like as I saw before, as I told before, if you have wide decomposition, you have at least, uh, you will have at least entry point where to dig into more and uh, where, where to, go on, go, to go further. Yeah, probably any questions here? Okay, uh, about cones. Uh, well, the problem is with line profiling that uh, basically it takes your function and point and it just like analyzing only it. Um, and you might have a lot of dependencies here inside. Probably you use some libraries and line profiling won't won't know much about it. it. Like it doesn't know anything. Like it just analyzing line by line. So that's it. It's simple and it's have like your limitations. Um, yeah, about producing uh, large amounts of data, it relates to that if you want to to dig deeper, you have to profile each function. So you have to go low on the lower level and create, for instance, like the creator, I will show later uh, how it works uh, for, for each function that you are like, looks suspicious for you. And to, to map these things, it could be a bit hard way. So you, you need to be ready for that. But in a nutshell, if you, if you have simple things and you are not uh, like your, your application is not decomposed uh, much, it could be a good shot for you. Uh, well, another thing that uh, it can be implemented globally because you will, like, yeah, you can you can analyze the whole project, but it won't give you the sense of of what's going on. So, yeah, you will just narrow. You you have to narrow some some endpoints or some some stuff you're measuring. Okay, so let's let's move to the example. I have a short one. Um, yeah, just tell me. Have you see my idea? Yes. Yeah. Awesome. <clears throat> yeah, here I have some. Oh, yeah, just a second. I'll move this stuff. Yeah. I created some some things that like can load the system more and like some functions which is supposed to work to work long. Um yeah, and see how, how the line profiler works. Just a second. Just let's imitate that we are in some simple server. Oh, it's it's actually working. Okay. Um, and my profile, what what is what it does? What what is expected to be? So yeah, we will come on this thing. And basically that's what it what it is. It's like simple decorator. Like when you uh, just passing the function and it function, the function is being injected by things which is like taking care of line profiler. Later on, it's like just printing the result. Like here is just thing that will print the result in our output, but you can store it as well for analyzing in files. Just we'll see it later. Yeah, and here is <clears throat> basically simple Flask application with one endpoint and with multiple lazy calls. So yeah, let's see what it does. Cool. Oh, I have to go to the web. Not sure that you've seen it, but believe me, <laughs> I'm doing the call for the for bit for the application. Right, and here you saw that. 44 and I received the, the one endpoint is working fast. So yeah, what we have here. And yeah, probably in this way it would be easier. Uh, this how this is how uh, output from the profiling looks like. So yeah, it's like just taking your function, which you decorated, and just give you a sense of how much time take each line. So you can see like number of calls, hits times and etc. So in here we can see that something is just taking 30% of of things. We we have a sense which which to optimize. So 
like most probably it, it looks like this. Uh, yeah, that's that's the idea. But if you can see uh, in a nutshell, there is some calls which like, for instance, why, why external long call? Just like waiting for the uh, other service, which is itself just waiting, just getting sleep for one second. And line profiling won't tell you nothing about it because it just taking your function analyzing it's it's simple but not so deep um yeah that's it about plan profiling any questions is there a way to make sure that when using line profiling and we have let's say some core libraries of python do we need to keep on digging in the core libraries or we should accept the result as is it depends like if you you can see like in this example we don't have any like things related to the core libraries as far as far as understood like your question that uh, like for instance for for loop is working too long right yeah um, yeah so in in this line profiler you won't get such things like uh, only even if, if only if uh, like Python will drop the for instance like Python three for three thirteen with the like loop issues yeah for sure you will you will see it but uh, it is just like surfacely looking onto onto your application it won't dig into uh, like what's going on on C Python level and etc so if you want you can go deeper um, like you can decorate to each function deeper. Like you can, from line profiler, like let's do it this way, I was wrong. So by doing this, you are basically profiling your primary target and profiling the offending method. Yeah, it is. So you will profile, you have to, to, dig, to dig down and see the profiling of of each part which you are working. So like as you can see, if you are if I would create this function as well, I will see the output for this function as well. Uh, and the same is working when you go down for like for built-in functions. If you want to profile them as well, you have to inject it in the built-in level and you will see the output for it as well. Did I answer your question? Yeah, pretty much it did. Okay. Okay, so move, let's move on. Oh, where is it? And I guess it should be right here. Okay. So the second one is call count profiling, uh, which is can give you a sense how many profile, how many like functions used and called in your application. So basically the main difference here, uh, that like, let, let's go on. Uh, it's, it gives you a sense, not only high level functions. So as you can see previously in line profile, that's, I have a simple loop, which is like was trading through, through one function. And it was on the highest level. Um, when you want to, to collect the whole, it, it, like let's say it, the tree of calls, uh, well, call count profiling can help you here because it will go the, on the down level and see what's going on there. And yeah, it's it's also not difficult in implementation. Like you, it's some different approach, and but but it's also not not so difficult. And the main advantage besides the line profiling, sorry, I didn't tell it before. The line profiler which I showed you previously, it wasn't the built-in Python package. So you have to install it to the third party. Uh, it's pretty popular, but we have what we have. And about call count profiling, well, it just, uh, it uses uh, C profile, which is built in for, for Python packages, which is part of standard library. Okay. <clears throat> well, um, yeah, as I, as I told before, it allows you to, to find the, the most used functions and methods, whatever it could be. It um, Like about built-ins, it's also related to, to that. Um, you can deeply analyze 
that's it that you will dig into you don't need to um, extra actions to implement it on the lower levels um yeah if you want to if you are finding if you're trying to find like the top 10 functions it could be easily narrowed like and like if you if you see the high peaks or high spikes of usages like you can easily filter it but in itself in itself if you're application is like more or less balanced it could be like different difficult thing to analyze yeah and it can, can give you a wide picture well like for instance like how how often loops you are using and like do you do you have some ways to optimize it just just about it uh, yeah it's as i as i told previously it not always indicates the big places because like your architecture could be could be a project in that way that uh, like it's supposed to use the some some methods or function in this way just like specific of your um, service of your application it depends but at least you can you can have a sense of, of understanding okay so let's let's move there um that's one it's pretty pretty the same from let's 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 see what we have here pretty the same application with one endpoint and we will just do pretty the same things um uh, yeah but to to manage that like if you want to for instance like for plus it, it doesn't really depend like if you want to do it for django for api you just can use middleware and that's it so make sure that you are a, logging your things rightly so before request after request and that's it so what's going on here i will just like sort by calls it's number of, of what's going on and sort interesting for me 20 21 so yeah let's see that's it Okay, and what do we have here? Uh, yeah, as like as it mentioned, is this one is a bit difficult to read. <laughs> so, uh, comparing to line profiling, to to understand something here, you need to uh, like to understand what you are looking for, and you need to spend some some more time on understanding it. So, for instance, like this preset six and codex, like you you have to understand like and, and spend much time on what's going on here but it can you give a sense like number of calls and that something could be wrong here like for instance like we have writing object 500 thousand things like let's see what is it like we are going to write a file and we just read it in a loop so probably it could be a weak place for us and call count function could sell it for you. For instance, like if you write lines, it will dramatically change the things for you. Yeah, that's it. Um, yeah, it also can analyze line by line. And you can, like, here is it contains a lot of things. Like you can, you, you understand that uh, here is some built in methods, and as well, like it's, mixed with your functions which is you to to your self in, in project uh yeah for you can you can use some filters for instance like uh, in documentation there are some good examples that you can filter out some results if you are to the interested in but again like if you are filtering them out like your your picture could be not complete and you might miss something so just like take care about it and like make sure that that you are not missing something well that's pretty it uh, what i can say is like uh, for for some applications for instance for flask uh, it's available like you can put it on on each request and it's easier to you uh, to wait a second it could be easier for you to like create in for each request and you can measure like all the things but later on you need to to spend some time on analyzing the files you produced for instance like if i'll do the second request 
to like avoid statistic issue like or statistic error. Uh, yeah, that would be pretty the same, but as you can see, there are some something that changed even like my code is really straightforward and simple. I don't like do any kind of magic here, but at least you need to to do it for some more times so and need to analyze and collect the done as a, the metrics, the data. So yeah, it could be the difficult part of it. Oh yeah, that's that's about co count profiling. Any questions? Yeah, so um, because you mentioned that, yeah, as, as, and then also we saw that uh, for this profiling uh, for the Flask app, I mean, Flask itself uh, is rather not that much complicated from the perspective of uh, configuring the API itself. But what about uh, more, uh, let's say, uh, complex solutions like Django, for instance? Uh, because uh, as far as I understood, uh, for this particular uh, combination, there is uh, something that uh, might work for Flask, but uh, I guess that uh, such approach for, for uh, Django and uh, profiling, for instance, Django and with cooperation with uh, DRF uh, might be a little bit complicated. Did you have a chance to um, like work with Django and and such profiling before, or do we have any experience with something like this? Well, yeah, what what I can say, like, uh, no, I, I have an experience working with Django. What I can say, like, for you, yeah, Django itself contains a lot of, like, what I, I would say, like, under the hood things, which is like you don't see, but Django looks uh, like doing it. Uh, yeah, the simple answer, correct. like, uh, yeah, the simple answer for you would be here. It's like the same as like for any web framework you like you can just set it as a middleware but yeah for sure you are right that uh, there is this profile thing would be like more messed than flask so yeah you will you will see a lot of things which you are not expect to that and that's why I, that is correct yeah. that, 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 that that is basically the the reason why i'm asking because for this particular example uh, and for this uh, pretty uh, basic uh, endpoint uh, we already uh we already see a lot of uh, uh like lines of output from this profiling and i'm just uh yeah i probably will check it out how would it look like from a uh, perspective of configuring also some sort of simple uh, endpoint using django and drf and just see how um how many lines or how many information uh, will be provided from uh, from simply calling the API itself, right? Yeah, right. And uh, the thing is that like you can filter out the the things that like produce in Django. For instance, like you you should know that that it is Django. Like as you can see here, it is like for instance, some leap is codex. Like, yeah. But, so can we can I mean, we put some, can... some sort of ex exclusion on uh, profiling this, uh, or definitely maybe other way? Uh, can we somehow uh, have a sort of exclusion on the level of um, um, reporting the stuff? Because uh, yeah, obviously, if you would like to do the profiling, the the, the profiling needs to be executed throughout the uh, whole chain of um, uh, chain of uh, calls. Let's say it like this. But from the perspective of just preparing this uh, this simple output, uh, is there any way to filter out only? Yeah, or for instance, uh, those uh, those uh, things that uh, could be uh, like uh, somehow connected to to the framework that uh, that we are actually testing, just leaving only our um, our our logic that we would like to test out somehow. Yeah, and here is like you you can use filters. Like I don't have like a good answer for you now because like I don't have like documentation under my under my eyes, <laughs> like because uh, about it. But yeah, definitely you can, it is like a simple one that you can filter out using regex. Like you can filter out all the things related to, to your virtual end, for instance, uh, for leaps and et cetera, extra. So you can filter it out on the on the sense of report and it doesn't really matter which, which framework you are testing, like is it Flask or is Django. It's the first one. And the second thing that like uh, most likely for Django, there are some libraries which is already written by someone uh, for profiling uh like and and you can use, uh, use it uh as as a thing 
Okay. Not sure what it is, but yeah, that's yeah, sure. you... yeah, that's it. Okay, okay. thanks. No problem. Any other questions? Uh, yeah, not a question, just like a side note to the discussion. So no matter what framework we have, we can actually like live with the framework. Let's assume the framework does its job. So we are profiling our our own code. So in this case, like the simplest solution would be like the, we have some handler. Uh, we assume the framework does the job. So we don't usually we usually don't put the, all, all of the business logic into the handler. We uh, most likely will have some like service layer repository layer so we can apply the profiling there so we can skip the for like for example like the, all the mess that Django and all the calls that Django produces we can only just apply this to our own code where we just have our own stuff that we know right exactly right so yeah you can do such things that you enable and disable profiler like in the exact way like for instance like you know that you need to profile only such things and you will profile them like the before and after request middleware just like can give you a sense when you can uh, measure performance and like profile all the things which is going on there inside. But yeah, you can adjust it like on your own and in a more difficult way. Like, thanks for it. Okay, so let's move on and I will continue. Yeah, and time profiling, uh, which I was taking before. Um, well, it, it's it's pretty. It can give you more sense of of how much time your uh, like uh, all functions and built-in things, uh, libraries, etc., is working on. And uh, it's pretty similar to Colcan, but it's uh, can give you a sense step by step. It's not so detailed as line profiler, but it could be helpful in a sense like to understand when the most like performance issues is accumulating on. Uh, it's pretty the same implemented as call count. Uh, yeah, you always can can feel it the same way. It pretty it, it uses the same C, C profiler. Uh, yeah, what, what I can say apart from that, uh, it gives you a chain result. It's like the main difference from call count things that at least uh, you can you can see on which level, like deeper, even deeper, uh, thing is getting is getting worse or it's taking much time. Uh, yeah, but still, it's like longer to read and like it's not always easy is to understand to understand why is it taking long. So you can like you you have to anyway take a take a deeper look uh, like what's going on there. Let's let's show. The one more. Okay. So basically, what we have here, as like as I by answering your previous question, like for Flask, there is some middleware which can be used, like attached for for uh, with the application, and you can use it. But like, yeah, let's keep it for now. I'll just give you a sense, like for Flask, if you are like interested in that. Uh, well, basically, here is pretty the same. But instead of uh, like decorating the the whole like before request and after request, we are excluding some something that we are not interested, in, like in Flask, for instance. And the main difference that we are sorting by different scene. Like come time here is like yeah, it's just joking one uh, by by author of the library. Uh, yeah, but it can give you a sense uh, like. What what time was spent on each part? Let's show. And I need to put some requests. Okay, let's see. Oh, it's second one, sorry. Okay, so what do we have now? What we can see is like, uh, Cumulative time spent here, like ten seconds, was on on the hello world, and there is some some gap which is like happening here. So when we are doing rec, 
like socket track. Let's let's see again. And yeah, so that thing that seeing that we are trying to get some response from the simple H server, which is like synthetically waits one second. And the time profiling showing it us. Oh sorry again. Yeah, it's showing us that it took one second and six thousand of milliseconds. Uh, that's basically it. So you can see step by step which function is cumulate the more the more activity. Like such thing is being cached, but it's like also taking taking some long time. It's like for, for now it could be uh, a bit difficult to understand uh, as it was like with line profiler. But it give you, can give you a deeper sense, like not only of call count, because like your function could be really fast. Uh, like even if you're calling them like 500 times. Uh, but yeah, some functions could, could take a lot. Uh, yeah, that's, that's the idea of it. Uh, the idea of profiling by timing. And like it could be easily implemented, like you don't need to, to modify significantly application. So you can just create the simple decorator and have a sense of what's going on there. Any questions? Okay. Well, so what, which, what is in to shell? Like what we have in, like, if you, if you want to like somehow to measure and present uh, proceeds uh, as a numbers, like how, how is performance your code? Like profile profiling is could be a good way for you. Like sometimes, yeah, you need to dig into, yeah, or you can spend like some time on, on understanding the output, uh, especially like in my examples, it was like pretty simple, uh, like actions. I, and I didn't use much uh, the external libraries. And even though you can see that it's not so easy to, to even read and understand the, the problem. But like you, the good thing here is that like, if you will spend some time here, like you, you need to just feel, feel comfortable for you itself. Like it, it will take for you, like at least like half an hour. And later on, you will just quickly search through, through it and through the output. You can like have an idea, like where to dig into, how to measure it. And like, probably you need to profile some your DB the big queries, or it's like you have to go to another team and see what's going on on the other micro So probably you need to to see the metrics for specific endpoints for other uh, service. It, it depends, but like profiling can give you a sense, like what what are the weakest places of your code. Yeah, that's it. And from my side for today, uh, like if you have any extra questions, like feel free to ask. And yeah. Yeah, I do have a quick one. From your experience, which profiler would you recommend that we use? Stick with C profiler, use Palantir, Scalene, or any other options that you recommend? Okay, yeah, from my perspective, I can say that uh, C profiler is pretty uh, like useful one. It's simple. Uh, like the thing is that like it, it is built one, like it's pretty performant one. And it's like could be used with other visualization uh, apps, for instance. Like if you have, if you like get information in visualized uh, way easier, like it could be a good thing to you. Unfortunately, I didn't have experience with Palantir. Uh, I heard more, I heard a lot about it, but unfortunately, probably it could be also the good solution. Uh, yeah, but for deep analysis and like if you need to, not getting the high level, but you, you need to get some statistics, how would you recommend the C profile? Again, like uh, it depends on your uh, flavors and how do you feel. Like the good metric of the good profiling library is like as usual for, for all open, open source, like uh, more stars it has, like the more chances that, that it's fine. Do we have other questions? Um, I have a quick one. Uh, thanks a lot for the presentation. Um, what about memory profiling in Python, for example, for uh, Python objects? Um, 
deep dive maybe some recommendations related to some lab release uh not built in one um like uh, how much uh memory takes some objects uh exactly yeah well uh as i told i i didn't have much experience with memory profiling uh but yeah what i can say like uh the few libraries which is like the most popular is like memory and memory profiler uh as far as i remember unfortunately they are not built in uh but they are pretty proactive mm -hmm. and like memory profiling is more I would say it's just like community support. It's yeah, more so. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So mm -hmm. like uh, the profiling by by timing and by measuring your performance is like it's not the the thing is that you have to like it's not a black hole for for at all. And it's like uh, while the official uh, like standard for Python library supports it, so it's not so interested for for open source community. Yeah, but it's not about memory profile. So yeah, that, that's the libraries I can I can endorse you to try. Thanks. Other questions? <laughs>